Watch yourself, you creepy little bastard. And wash up! You smell like Pandora's box! I think you smell like butterflies and codfish, Rusty. Thank you, Peter. Alright, so what are we doing today? Well, since this thing's got low oil pressure, that means the pan's got to come off. I got to do the oil pump and, well, make sure my bearings are all right. All right, let's get started. All right, got the sway bar out, which makes very ample room to rip this thing off. The differential in proper terms. Probably going to rip the drive shaft. Well, not probably. I'm going to have to pull the drive shaft off. Then I'm going to move to the axles and but then I should be ready to start taking off some of the hard bolts and then once I only have uh, easy ones like that one and well, I'll find some more easy ones but once I have uh, just easy bolts left I'll get the trans jack under here and start ripping this thing out. Alright, so I got this big old tranny jack jammed under there and I've got a ratchet strap going over the axle tube so hopefully that when I pull this thing out of here, it won't go rolling and falling off. Also, something to be said about these CV axle bolts. The one on this side got no anti-seize. The one on that side got about a gallon of it. Two out of the, what is it, six bolts were just hand tight. Or no, two out of the six bolts were actually tight. The other four were hand loose. I don't have my GoPro, so I can't do a... Sweet time lapse like I was planning on, but uh, hopefully it should be pretty uneventful. So I'll just film it when it uh, when it comes out of here. All right, I think she's coming. Oh, oh, oh! Wait, it stopped. Maybe because that CV axle. Yeah, that's because the CV axle. Bring it back up. Try to get this fucking bastard out of the way. It's like it fucking hooked in there. Oh, where's my fucking pry bar? Man, I get one CV axle free. Ooh. She's out. I was gonna say, I got one fucking CV axle free, and the other one would just decide to hang around and. Oh, this ain't gonna fit. Oh, maybe a little. Maybe we just give her. Oh, fuck, just send her right into the fucking concrete. She's out. Oh, she's dragging. Oh, about ripped the sick fucking license plate off. Well, half of this thing came whip stalking out of there, doing about a buck twenty and slashed into the concrete. I'll be pretty fucking pissed if there's a crack in the case, but I don't see anything leaking more than, you know, residual. So the question is, is where does that leave us? Let's have a look. Where does that leave us in regards to the oil pan? Well, the last thing that needs to come out is the steering rod, whatever the hell it's called. Oh fuck, there's so much more room. Then again, I don't know how I'm gonna get bolts like that out of there. Well, maybe right there at an angle the camera's at, but sure doesn't look that fucking easy. What else do we got? Alright. So it looks like the only thing that's going to be a pain about this is that bolt right there and its counterpart hiding all the way up there. What a genius fucking design. But at least I might be able to get this rear main fixed because I fucking hate oil leaks. So this thing's probably going to sit in here for, I'd guess, no more than a week. Cause I just gotta get an oil pump and bearings and if I know this town, one of them things ain't gonna be in this town, if not both. But imagine my surprise. All right, that was more money than I was expecting it, but yeah, I got my oil, well, the oil pump's coming in from Anchorage. Same with a couple other things, but that's only gonna take about a day. The thing I'm really waiting on is my connecting rod bearings, which those are gonna be here Thursday. But uh, I got my gasket, I got my rear main, some oil, oil filter, plastic gauge, assembly lube, bunch of other stuff. Never had a two-page receipt from Napa, but keep in mind, this is with a fat discount. Original price was like 800 something 
All right, got all my sweet little part pile here. Got sandpaper for the crank in case we need it, which we probably will. 500, 800, and I think 1,000. No, 1,500. I'll just polish it up real nice. Some fresh oil, some high dollar fancy pants stuff. Plastic gauge, the guy was only supposed to sell me like one of these things, but he was a new guy. So he gave me like a whole fucking box of it. Sweet. Uh, rear main, assembly juice. Fucking oil filter, oil pump, main bearings, rod bearings. I got the go-go juice up there. So let's rattle this little oil pan off here and see what we're working with. Not really sure what the fuck they want me to do about that, but I didn't see that guy before. And he, I was kind of looking at this, I was like, oh, it's just a plate. Keep falling. Oh, it's the fucking motor mount. Ah, oh, fuck. So I need to take the motor mount off and get my engine hoist to hold the fucking motor up while I unbolt this thing. Oh, that's what moved. I touched something and it moved. I got fucking right concerned. Or I could just punch a fucking hole right in that. That option seems pretty good, but it kind of looks like a structural fucking angle. I don't really know nothing about all that. Or I could just loosen them all and see if I can move it enough. Let's try that first. Tell you, nothing really makes you feel more confident in yourself than when you're laying under a pickup at 2 a.m. and everybody's asleep and nobody can hear you. And this motor just starts getting right fucking happy and moving up above your head. So I got the persuasion stick. Not persuasion stick one, persuasion stick two, an actual fucking bar, but... I think if we give it a little love with persuasion stick one, she might want to fucking... Well... Then the motor could come down, crush my fucking skull, and no one will find me till tomorrow, but that's why they gave cars two motor mounts. After whispering at sweet nothings and giving it a fucking lullaby, I got her bent out of the way to get her out. That guy looks a lot fucking more easy to get to at this point in time. So I think we got that bolt, my little retainer bolt, and that bolt, that little fucker up there. That one's gonna be tough. And then this thing should pop off. Wrong. Well, after about, I don't know, maybe half an hour, it moves. Oh, fuck, I think I just put it back in. No! Hold on, where's my fucking mallet? There we go, she moves again now. And I forgot we got to take the, actually fucking, the arm off for the steering. That shouldn't be too much of a problem. Wrong. This thing's probably all fucking lubed up. Wrong. Leaking, uh... That fucking name always, I always forget that name. This one might be a bit of a bitch though, but I don't know. Did however might have bent the fucking oil pan, getting a little upset at it, but slide hammer bent it, slide hammer can probably fucking fix it. You have no fucking idea how much of a bitch this fucking thing was to get out. I mean, that was just fucking terrible. Fuck. Good lord. The hardest fucking part so far has been the oil pan. Oh yeah, I fucking jammed that in there because I was trying to get this arm off when I decided I couldn't get this thing off. And I just loosened that other knuckle, that guy right there off there, and just used it as a pry bar and that ended up just sliding right pretty off, so... I still gotta get this out, because I fucking did that, so... Oh my god. Holy fuck, we did it. Might have fucking tweaked the pickup a little bit. It was like, kind of over there. Just shouldn't be, but then I gave the oil pan, you know, a good old fucking solid twist when I was pulling it out. I was getting pretty fucking upset at the motherfucker, so... Not sure how we're gonna get the oil pan back in. Considering I had to twist it to get off, which moved the pickup. But I don't know, we'll figure it out. Nothing really rattles. I mean, you got your side to side movement. But I mean, these can, uh, in the perspective of towards and away from the camera, they all, well, compared to this one, they all move, I'd say, I don't know. Fuck, what would that be like? Maybe ten thousandths of an inch, maybe less. 
I don't know. But I'm going to start pulling off these fucking caps and I got to make myself like a, kind of like a valve tray, but I'm going to do it for these bearings so I can remember their orientation and placement. And I got to do the same thing for the rod cap or the, yeah, the rod caps. All right. I got main one out and I got main two out or three out. And I made sure to, there's an 18 on this side and a two on this side. And the 18 was facing toward the driver's side. So I'm kind of making myself a little valve tray kind of thing. So that I can just take these off. No, oh, well, I guess I didn't label the bolts, but I can label them. I can just put them like that. I don't think the bolts fucking matter, but yeah, this side's got a little, a little 36. So we know 36 points to the driver's side, but they don't look. Well, then again, that's not what's spinning. The bearing, the bearing ain't too bad. I mean, that's that's use. But that ain't too bad. What concern? I I don't know why they wouldn't be, but these are probably original bearings because it says 97 right on there. I can't seem to find a measurement though. There's no original or well, I guess they are original since they say 97 on them. But who fucking knows? So I don't think they're I don't think they're oversized. This one seems fine. Well, it's definitely got scoring that I can feel with my hand. So that's never a good thing. Well, that one just doesn't want to fucking come off, so I'm not going to read it. So next, I only wanted to pull two out. I didn't pull the one out that goes to the oil yet. Well, mainly because it didn't want to fucking come out, but also, you know, fuck it. You see the timing chain in there. Whew. That's a lot of fucking slop. This side. Let's see about this side. That side's pretty taut. I mean, obviously, I mean, this side's going to be loose and that side's going to be taut, but that's pretty fucking loose. You know, I mean, that's... Get, get out of the way, finger. I mean, that's a lot of... Who fucking cares, but <laughs> whatever. All right, so now I'm going to go through... Take off each of these fucking main bearings. Oh god, I mean these things, but I gotta come up with a foolproof way to either fucking stamp them or figure out some way to keep their orientation the same. Because I do not want to fucking get a weld job in here if I put one of these in here backwards and it's not board right or something, but. Oh, fuck. I've been at this for like two and a half hours. I need a sandwich. All right, so what do we got here? All right. For all the main caps, the top bearing is still in the motor. So I didn't want to take that out yet, but... So if we look at the main caps. Well, they're certainly by no means phenomenal. My fingernail... Maybe that's the grit I put on it by picking the damn thing up, but... That was main three, that's right. Well, I gotta watch out for... Well, I got the numbers I could've looked at. That's why I put those numbers. This one should say 18, doesn't it? Oh, that's a 16. I'll have to double check that, that I didn't fuck that up or that I didn't confuse the numbers when I was under there because it's pretty fucking dark. So let's move on to the cap. The caps. Down to the fucking copper. That is all of the aluminum that's left. A lot more aluminum left on that one, but pretty much fucking down to the copper. Also, the way I figured out that I'm going to get them back in the right side is that the caps are going to face, or the dots that I stamped in there, all have to be facing towards the driver's side. So, which some of them, uh, all of them have already little holes put in them, but they're pretty insignificant and fucking doled out. These are actually... You know fresh holes so you'll be able to see those really well when you clean it up when I clean it up this one fucking copper this one fucking copper this one fucking copper fucking copper fucking copper fucking copper everything's fucking copper around here I'm starting to consider whether fucking aluminum came on the goddamn bearings but 
under here. All right. Under here. What do we got? Well, if I run my finger on it, it's not too fucking bad. That one's a little worse than this one. You know, you can definitely feel some, a little bit. That one's decent. That one's the same. Where am I main? Well, see this one, the oil journal. Here, right there in the fucking middle. You see a little hole there. That kind of fucked it up a little bit. I can definitely feel a little something there. More than the rest. And then six. Six is probably the smooth so far. What about five? Five and six are fucked. I can still feel something. But, you know, 180,000 miles. You expect to feel something. I left a cap four on there, by the way. But nothing too fucking bad. My brother, he had a blue Dodge. And apparently that thing's crankshaft was just fucking hosed. But uh, none of these seem too bad. The bearings are pretty far gone, but it was ran to the point just before the bearings started to cause a fuck ton of damage. I left uh, I left uh, caps uh, two and four on, so I got both two and four. But because I didn't, I didn't just want to leave the sloppy fucking chain hanging, keeping the only thing keeping the crankshaft up. But it's like fucking 6 a.m. I'm done. I'm done for the night. Come back here tomorrow and try to polish them up and and uh, maybe get the caps back in. And Fuck, I got a lot of work to do. I don't even know I'm going to get this new fucking oil pump in. What with the pickup and twisting the fucking pickup. But that's all shit I can think about once I'm done having my beauty sleep. See how that bolt, bolt's all stretched out and threads are almost gone? That's how you know it's good. I was kind of curious about what the oil pump looks like. I haven't actually pulled this cover off yet, so. All right, that's not too, that's not bad at all. I mean, that is, damn. Yeah, that still kind of looks brand new. Whatever. Got a new one anyway, so fuck it down here in the hole a little bit of scoring but not too awfully much this oil just smells like the worst combination of just fucking sludge and old sewage all right nice and rested now i got some tube which i probably should have done originally i'm gonna put them on the ends of these uh, rod rod studs but i probably should have done that first thing all right, so now it comes time for the long, arduous task of polishing, and since I don't want to get the groove that's in here, because that's raised up and it'll make my sanding ineffective, I've got strips cut to the exact width of the journal, right where it's smooth in between the two. And now I'm just going to go run over that with 500, and then 800, and then 1500 for a little while, and I'll come back and show you what it looks like. I've been sitting here sand, sanding for, a, I don't know, maybe about an hour. I'm up to 800 grit and I'm just starting on this journal right here. I'm only working on two of them right now. I went around 500 with each of them, all the way around. And uh, I've only done the top half on 800 grit. So I still gotta rotate and do 800 on the other half. Well that certainly looks a fuck of a lot better. I just got finished on this and Still, you know, you can feel a little something on there, but that is a thousand times better. I have yet to actually turn on another 180 and clean up the other side, but I'm going to do that. Then we'll get some of my assembly juice on the two bearings. And then, uh, time to throw these caps back on. Okay, a lot of progress. A lot of progress since my last century, but... So we got number four off, and... The bearing is sticking out of there just a little bit, but same with uh, number one. They're both just kind of hanging out there. All right, this video has been pretty fucking sporadic just because I've been all over the place. What with? Well, I just got back from Anchorage today and proceeded to go inside and clean myself. Well, clean myself up, but... Wash up! You smell like Pandora's box! You know, get ready to come down here. And, uh... 
Well, now I've got, uh, I'm not even sure where I left off on the last video, but, or last entry, I would call it. But I've got my connecting rod uh, cap bolts nuts soaking in oil. Not that they really absorb it, but I just put them in oil after cleaning them. And I've been trying to find the torque spec. Uh, so I got them all nice and cleaned up. Because the first time I put them on there, see how some of them are shiny and some of them are kind of dull? Shiny side needs to be facing towards the top of the engine just so that uh, the mating surface is correct. I already knew that. I just forgot when I was putting them back on there. It's not like I torqued them down or anything. I just kind of put them on there to hold the cap on. But now I got them all here. And now the cap should fall off. It's not like it's a big deal if they do. But right here, 3.9 engine. What am I looking for right here? Connecting rod, cap, bolts. Right there in the middle. It says foot pounds. We need to go 45 foot pounds. I think I might do them 20 at first just to get an initial torque on them. And I know you're supposed to torque them. Uh, with the uh, part that has the little flange on it first, which uh, all the cylinders that are on the driver's side, uh, the flanges are on the driver's side too, and all the cylinders that are on the passenger side, flanges are facing towards the passenger side. So that's going to be a, a bit of a tedious thing, uh, getting that done. So I'm going to do 20 uh, foot-pounds, then I'm going to do 45 foot-pounds. Then the cap should be, then the rod cap should be all good. Run into quite the fucking problem. Not sure if you can see that. That was not me. I was cleaning this to get ready to put in. That one's already clean and lubed. This one's the one that's gotta go on top. Yeah, quite the fucking mistake there that they uh, gave me in a bearing. Cause I didn't do that cause it just came out of the box. Runs all the way down, a little bit less on this side, but this side's pretty damn bad. I only noticed because when I was cleaning it up, a little bit of my paper towel got stuck on there. Now, if I were to have dropped this thing and there was a nick in that top corner right up there, I'd probably grab a file and and uh, turn it down a little bit, but that's on the bearing surface. That's pretty fucked up. I'm not sure if I can use this, and the rest of the bearings are inside the engine. So if I don't come up with a plan for this, I can't return them because I don't have all the bearings. Then again, they fucked up. So if they don't want to, they want to take this bearing back. I'll just burn their fucking house down. Are you gonna put your fingers in them, Rusty? I most certainly am, Peter. Bingo, bingo! Through the magic of editing, you people didn't really see the wait time I waited to get these bearings, but I have bearings now. Look at these sexy, flawless bearings. All right, I already got cap one in there. I did that. Now I gotta clean this guy up because I lubed him up and then I was right about to put the top section of the bearing in when I noticed it was screwed up. We got the rear main in the right direction, sweet. So now I gotta put uh, these bearings in this one and get the other uh, bearing in the top there, which shouldn't be that easy considering these are fricking fat and uh, well, the other ones didn't really want to go in there that good either, especially that thrust bearing. Fuck that thing. I've already got all my oil pan surfaces and my bearings polished and cleaned. And just because I've been spending so much time waiting on parts and fucking people and doing everything that I really all just been doing cleaning. So hopefully this two and a half week project uh, might get uh, fired up to, well, today, tomorrow, hopefully today. See if I run into any more bullshit, which I know is a fat, which I know is gonna happen. That stupid little fucking peckeroon didn't want to go in. But I finally got it and it's nice and centered and flush. The crankshaft was just a, maybe like a tenth of a thousandth over to the fucking left. Luckily I got this nice little leverage hole. I was able to push it over this way. It slid in fine this way when I tested it. But since you got that little tab there, you can't slide it in that way. So, of course, the crankshaft would only sit in the direction where it's preventing me from getting the fucking thing in. Fuck! After many a days and weeks and many regrettable life choices, the bearings are finally in. Which means it's finally time, after weeks of starting this project, to do what I actually wanted to do. The oil pump. So I'm gonna fill this thing up with motor oil. Some people pack it full of assembly lube. Some people fucking run it dry and just use the 
just go underneath the distributor and turn the little fucking drive shaft. But I'm just going to fill it with motor oil. It's what's going to be in there anyway. And before I start, I'm going to unplug the, the, what's it called? The coil, which I think I already have it unplugged for some reason. Yeah, I already got it unplugged. And I'm just going to crank the fuck out of it with, uh, with no spark and hopefully prime the entire engine that way. And also, I might be able to get a reading off my, uh, my oil pressure gauge in there to be able to see if it's uh, doing what I want before I actually go and fire the engine. So I'm going to fill this thing up, get it in there, get it torqued. Then it'll be about time to go dig out that, uh, that uh, motor hoist, cherry picker, lift up the front of the fucking engine. I don't know where I'm going to do that. Probably this alternator bolt here and... Uh, I might try going off this AC bolt here, or maybe the power steering bolt. I don't fucking know what I'm going to use yet. I got to figure it out, but then I got to take the motor mounts off to make a uh, complete room. I might take the inspection plate off of the, not the inspection plate, the little dust cover off the back of the front of the bell housing, just to make sure that oil pan goes in there nice and fucking straight so that nothing happens. It doesn't leak. I really fucking hope the rear main doesn't leak. That, that was a little iffy going in there. I used assembly lube to put the rear main in, so hopefully that'll do just fine. Some people use grease. I, building engines, people use a lot of different shit, and it's pretty hard to find out what uh, what's the best when you're going online. Everybody thinks their opinion's the best, but we all know my opinion's the best. All right, after 10,000 fucking years, I think this project is close to getting done. Inspection plate off, motor mounts off. It's a pretty fucking clear shot for the oil pan to go up in, so I'm going to finish uh, doing one last final clean on the mating surface for the block. And that little fucking bitch is ready to go in. Well, the oil pan's all back on and fucking torqued. I want to give that uh, silicone I put up in uh, there, I'll roll it up on the um, rear main and... I'll tell you what you do, you just take them dang old spark plugs out in that little hole, you just put a little oil around there, just like Bobby Hunter said, it's like it'd go boom, boom, just like that. The uh, oil pan to cure a little bit, so go have me some lunch. Peter, get the meat in the kitchen. All right, buzzy nuts, meat in the bag or two fingers in the stinker. I think I did good, Rusty. I got a lot of the tubular meats. Tubular meats. Nice work, Peter. Back to the ship, my little turkey. Put those uh, motor mounts back in. Try to put some stuff in. And then uh, we'll give her a uh, crank with no power. And if the oil pressure looks decent, we'll uh, give it a crank with some power. See if he'll start. Alrighty. Motor mounts back on. Oil's in it. Battery's reconnected. She's ready. For her first crank test, if this fucking thing would go on. There we go. Yep, coil is disconnected. And the plug isn't anywhere around it, so it can't uh, jump and cause a spark. Wrong. I don't think it'd do that anyway. All right, let's uh, give her a fucking crank and see if she makes oil pressure. The, the frickin' uh, alarm's still going off, and I can't figure out what I did with the wrench to do the battery up so I can't disconnect it to reset it, because I don't know how to turn this alarm off. I think the battery in my... Oh, there it is. I think the battery in uh, the remote control this thing has is dead. So, all right. Come on, you fucking bitch. And now you're reset. Actually... I'm just going to go open the fucking door beforehand. I don't really know how this security system in here works. But all I know, which I forgot to do, is if I have the battery, if I have the door, rather, open. Really? Oh, God, how the fuck do I do this? All right, after many trial and error, I took the batteries out of this thing, kind of bent the tabs forward because it wasn't making connection. These are three volt. There's two three-volt batteries in here, and it showed it. The voltmeter showed it was making three volts. So I figured, why would they be dead? So I... Made a little better connection for him, and now... If you can hear that, but I got electric doors again. 
Well, actually for the first time, I never actually had this working. You just have to hit unlock when you first hook up the battery and silence. All right, now that we got that figured out, let's figure out if this thing makes oil pressure. Got oil in it, everything's all nice and good. Well, okay, so my gauges don't like to work when it's cranking, but I'm still fucking priming it, so. All right, I guess let's go hook up the coil and we'll see if it starts now. And once it starts, once it gets oil pressure, I heard this thing fucking clicking and sparking away. So I'm sure it wasn't too fucking happy under here, but and click make sure everything else is dialed in and i didn't fuck anything over here so this shouldn't be unplugged but there we go imagine my fucking surprise this thing should start up now she's got oil bearings are in there and fucking torqued fucking torque all right annie this would be a really bad time for this gauge to like quit working or something. All right, 66 PSI, good oil pressure over there. All right, so she's got oil pressure. Let's see what she sounds like. A little click in the top is still there. I gotta figure out what that is. This thing's still making some of the noises it used to, but I don't know. It seems to be happy. It's making oil pressure. Well, I guess we can't have nice things. Fuck you. Alrighty, it's the next day. Got myself some oil additives to help friction so that the bearings seat properly. Got myself a new oil filter because that one's probably pretty fucking old. Same one though. That one seems to be doing alright, I guess. Who's to say? So today, oil additives, oil filter, and uh, eventually get that, uh, that diff back in. Hopefully the entire thing put back together. So we got the diff back in, which was not fun whatsoever. Now, I think the next thing I'm gonna do is a steering rack, which I've got some cleaning to do, uh, which I know you can't see, you can see the stud, but I've gotta clean that one up and the hole for this one and a couple other things, because when it was coming out, it was not happy. So I'm gonna use this, try to clean some of the stuff up and maybe get a wire wheel in here to clean up that stud. And hopefully, if it ever has to come off again, fingers crossed not, knock on some wood, do whatever fucking witchcraft I have to do and make sure I don't have to take this thing back apart. But if it happens, it should come out nice. All right, steering's back in, which, after doing that, I'm hitting kind of a wall of motivation, but I only got two parts left. I got the sway bar and the drive shaft. And then I gotta do my oil filter, and then I think I'll be ready to drive. That's about an hour and a half of work, I think, but fuck, I'm tired. Little problem, when I took the sway bar, I don't know if you can see that right, but it's, uh. Yeah, it's not really supposed to be there. Especially since the hole for it's, you know, over there. I think if I uh, put a little bit of weight up here on this uh, suspension, then it'll come up and I can get it in, but we'll see. All right. 
Let's get this thing outside. Oh my God, it's beautiful. It's so fucking beautiful, it moves. Oh my God. All right. I'm gonna let that thing just sit there and have a solid run. Keep checking up on it and let it warm up while I clean up the shop and then uh, take it for a drive if it's still running. I'm not sure if you can hear that nasty clicking and rattling but I went around with the stethoscope and I can't really find it but I know it's somewhere on uh, on this belt. Uh, every time I hear a click you can see that the tensioner moves so something in there is about to come apart but I don't really care as long as the bottom end's happy. Well I've been sitting here cleaning up the shop that ticking sure has quieted down a lot or less frequently I mean not quieted down just less frequently. I don't know if that's good or not but I'm gonna assume it's bad. You know I'm sure that I'm pretty sure it's the water pump which I got a spare for that thing upstairs so not a big deal but I'm pretty sure that thing's about to fucking explode. <clears throat> oh, I almost put her in the ditch. I've been driving this thing for a good, uh, oh, maybe 20 minutes. Oil pressure, phenomenal. Well, maybe not phenomenal. 25 uh, at a hot idle isn't really the best, but it ain't, it more than doubled what this thing was. It's hitting about 22, 20, 22 to 25, uh, it seems like, but that's uh, really pretty good. That more than doubled my oil pressure and that's pretty good. Uh, pretty fucking responsive too, I'd say. Looking good. All right, she's sitting steady at 22. I think that's uh, gonna be its new hot idle uh, oil pressure, but let's put a couple hundred miles on this thing and then we'll uh, figure that out. It's nice to see the temp, uh, the temp gauge on the trans actually move after all the driving I did, but. So now I just gotta get this thing registered and uh, get my insurance on it. Then I should be able to uh, put a couple hundred miles on it, figure out what I'm gonna do well, locker wise. And then I've got some tear tires I wanna put on it and uh, throw some uh, lockers in it if it, uh, if the oil pressure holds up and the motor stays together in one piece. So yeah, I think that might be the next video if here in a, I don't know, maybe like a month or two after this one, I might uh, start putting lockers in it. I think I'm gonna try to daily drive this thing for a few weeks first. And see how it goes.